hard every day. All right, one minute, y'all. <coughs> and while I'm thinking about it, please talk to you through the mic. Microphone. Yes. Oh, oh. I'm, 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 I'm. When y'all talk, be sure you talk into the microphone because they, they're not hearing it. Okay. <laughs> y'all ready? Okay, let's get the show on the road. Good afternoon. Welcome to the code board for Titusville. Please make sure your cell phones are on silence or cut off or whatever. That includes the members of the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do first. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have a quorum for today's meeting. <laughs> Attorney, Nature, would you like to swear in the staff, please? Please rise, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? The city desires to accommodate persons with disabilities. Accordingly, any physically handicapped person pursuant to Chapter 286.26 Florida Statutes should at least 48 hours prior to the meeting submit a written request to the chairperson that the physically handicapped person desires to attend the meeting. Any person who decides to appeal any decision of the Code Enforcement Board with respect to any matter considered at this meeting will need a record of the proceedings and for such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. Any person or defendant who requests to review or, or object to any exhibits presented to the Code Enforcement Board by the City of Titusville prior to submission to the Code Enforcement Board must stay in and state their request to review the exhibits prior to review by the Board at the time their case or agenda items come, comes before the Board for hearing. Any person found to be in violation of the City of Titusville Code of Ordinances and given a time frame in which to comply shall, upon compliance, be responsible for contacting the code enforcement supervisor for an inspection to verify said compliance. The violation will not be considered to be in compliance until the code enforcement supervisor is notified and verifies compliance. Okay. I need um, a motion on the floor for approval of the minutes from uh, February Mar 11th and March 11th of this year, please. I have a question first. Okay. Would, would we have minutes from March? You're going to have to turn your mic on. Speak into it so that the... Okay, I, I, I know. I know. Okay. There, would, there were would minutes... Would we actually there, have minutes there since are, we did not have the meeting are, for there March? There is minutes that were provided online, or provided to the committee. Okay, obviously, I didn't read them. Well, there are one page stating that we didn't have a quorum and that the meeting was canceled. I move we accept the minutes from the February and March meetings. Any questions? Any concerns? Second. Uh, motion by Ashley, second by Ed. Any questions or concerns? Roll call vote, please. Member Herman? Yes. Member Edens? Yes. Vice Chairman Beckles? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Chairman Bell? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, Ms. Chelsea, would you like to start, please? Yes, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming today. Sorry uh, we could not conduct our meeting last week or last month, and the minutes, as you would see, do reflect that we were unable to have a quorum. So we've changed the agenda to include determination of a quorum. Thank you, Megan, for making that minor change this month. The first case on the agenda is number 19-08, for the property located at 2975 Beale Street in Titusville. The code enforcement officer assigned to this case is Officer Lewis. I'd like to invite him up to the podium to present this matter. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a, uh, I can't see now. 
case number 1908-08, uh, respondents Rachel B. Pouncey and Justin L. Sheffield. Violation address 2975 Bill Street, Titusville, Florida. Uh, mail to same address, 2975 Bill Street. Violations are 20-58A parking and 13-73 inoperative vehicle prohibited. Uh, as of this morning, the 2058A was abated. Um, only thing left now are the inoperable vehicles. Does the city wish to withdraw the violation cited for yard parking? Yes. City will withdraw the, the one violation and the one violation you will be entertaining for the duration of this matter is the inoperative vehicles prohibited section 13-73. Okay, uh, quick narrative. Uh, property had three vehicles in violation in the personal watercraft at the time of initial, uh, initial inspection. Uh, the uh, watercraft got moved. Uh, one of the vehicles got moved and uh, then one of the vehicles was still in the uh, driveway. Uh, other vehicle was in the driveway. Uh, there was another car. I'm sorry, there's three vehicles in the driveway now. <coughs> okay, the initial inspection was on 1025-18. Uh, uh, the notice of violation was posted on the property. Uh, the notice to respondents was sent on 1026 certified mail and uh, signed form returned on 1031 from the owner. Officer Lewis, did you provide notice of the violation to the owner of record by first class and certified mail as well as posting the same on the property and at City Hall? Yes, I did. Can you please submit the proof of mailing and affidavit as to notice into evidence as exhibit number one? Okay, uh, the notice of hearing was posted at City Hall on February 19th, 2019, and hand delivered to the owner on the property. Uh, it was reposted on the property on uh, March the 27th, 19th for this meeting. Uh, certified mail was sent on 11 18 and returned signed for on 12 14 by the owner. Uh, the date to given to uh, the date, the compliance date was November 13th. 2018. I uh, have spoken with the uh, with the spun uh, with the, one of the son of the owners, with a son of the owners and the owner on the property. Uh, once uh, follow up inspections was on February. I mean uh, November the 18th, November the 14th of 2018, November the 28th of 2018, December the 14th of 2018, uh, January the 8th of 19, January the 25th of 19, February the 5th of 19. Uh, results, results of watercraft removed on 11-14-2018 uh, and one vehicle removed on 2-5-19, February the 5th. Based on your several inspections, did you file a complaint? Yes. Did you issue a copy of the complaint and a notice of this hearing to the owner of record by first class certified mail posting the same in the property and at City Hall? Yes. Can you, do you have an affidavit as to this notice? I do. Please place the proof of notice and affidavit into evidence as exhibit number three. The affidavit actually has two affidavits, one for the March hearing and another for the April hearing, as well as the complaint. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, definition of city code, uh, section 1373, inoperable, inoperable vehicles prohibited, time limit for disposition and exception. Uh, no person in charge or in control of property within the city, whether an owner, tenant, occupant, lessee, or otherwise, shall allow any, in, any inoperative vehicle to remain on such property for more than 72 hours. And I can't see it. 72 hours. No, I can't read it. <laughs> so, basically, can I have an inoperative vehicle? You can't have an vehicle for longer than 72 hours on your property. That in a nutshell. Okay. Now, uh, okay, these, these were some of the vehicles in violation. The blue Chrysler in front has been removed. 
Uh, there was a truck and the watercraft that was there, they were moved, the watercraft was removed, and then the, the truck was moved in February. Uh, this is the day, the hearing date. Uh, the cart is outside the, in the grass right there now has been moved to uh, the driveway. And the recommendation, based on the testimony and evidence presented in 19-08 Titusville Code Enforcement Board, determinant respondents Rachel B. Pouncey and Justin Sheffield uh, is the owner of record of property located at 2975 Bill Street, located in Titusville, Florida, as determined by the property appraiser's records. In possession or control of the property in violation of Titusville Code of Ordinances, section 20, section 13-73 as defined. Do you wish to amend this slide to remove 20-58? I do. Thank you. Okay, it is further recommended that the Code Enforcement Board order respondents to correct a violation on or before May the 8th of 2019. In order to correct the violation, the respondents must remove, of, remove all inoperative and unlicensed vehicles from the property. Order the respondents be assessed administrative costs in the amount of $152.38. If the respondent does not comply with the order by May the 5th, 2019, a fine of $150 per day will be imposed for the violation for the property until the property comes in compliance. <coughs> Are there any questions at this time of staff? The owner of the property is here in the audience and I assume would like an opportunity to speak to the Code Enforcement Board. But before we do that, are there any questions of city staff? There's yeah. just one vehicle remaining. No, ma'am, there's three vehicles remaining. Three, oh, okay, three vehicles. All three have no tags, current registration. Right. Do you have an affidavit of costs? <clears throat> Sorry. The affidavit of costs. <laughs> Officer Lewis, do you have an affidavit of <laughs> costs detailing the cost incurred to bring this case before the board? Yes, I do. And what is the amount? Uh, $152.38. Thank you. Please submit into evidence as number three. Thank you. And with that, we'll turn it over to the property owner. If you'd like to speak to the board, you may come up, speak directly into the microphone. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name and your address. My name is Rachel Pouncey, 2975 Bill Street, Titusville, Florida. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to get those guys to move the cars. My son, um, one vehicle we have a problem getting a tag for it because the grandfather had passed. And the grandson, not sure if it was in, both of them name are just his name. So we having a problem getting uh, the titles so we can get insurance for the other two cars. They just gotta be gone. How long do you think it's gonna take you, Mrs. Pouncey? I'm going to try to get it done before next month. Ms. Ponce, what you're saying is uh, those vehicles are not your personal possession? No, they are not my personal. They were uh, two of them, my son, the one's my grandson. Okay, so you need time to get those removed? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Pouncey, do you think that you could have the vehicles removed by May 8th? Yes, definitely, they'll be gone. Well, in light of that, then, we'll do the first initial oh, reading. Sure. Any, anybody have any more questions for Mrs. Pouncey? Okay, you can have a seat. Thank you. Do you 
Go ahead. Go ahead and start. I move that the board issue the following findings of facts and conclusions of law in this case. That the respondent is the owner of the pro property located at 2975 Beale Street, Titusville, Florida. That respondent was given proper notice of code violations found by the code enforcement officer and was given a reasonable time to comply before this case was brought before the board. That respondent was given proper, given proper notice of hearing. That respondent or a representative did or did not did appear at today's hearing. That the evidence and testimony presented show that the respondent did not bring the property into compliance by the date set forth in the notice and the property is in violation of the following code provisions. Section 13-73 by reason of inoperable vehicles. Respondent should be given until 5-8-2019 to bring all violations into compliance. It shall be respondent's responsibility to immediately notify the code enforcement officer when compliance is achieved so the officer can inspect and confirm compliance. If compliance is not achieved by this date, a subsequent compliance hearing will be held and a fine in the amount of $150 per day may be imposed for each and every day that any of the violations continue past the compliance date. In setting the proposed fine, the board considers the gravity of the violations, any actions taken by the respondent to correct the violations, and any previous code violations by this respondent. The city's costs of prosecution are imposed in the amount of $152.38. Any questions? A second. Get your. I'd like to see the, well, your... like to see the uh, cost uh, reserved. Reserved, yes. I'm okay with reserving costs. So am I. Any other Thank questions? You. I need a second. Second. Motion may, by Ashley, second by Ariel. Any other questions? I would like to make a point of for discussion before you make your vote here. In previous, in the in the way things were previously done, we had a second compliance hearing, and at that time, the board reserved jurisdiction for the opportunity to discuss costs at that time. In the way things were, are going now, there's one hearing, and it's today. And I do not anticipate bringing this case back up before the board unless you ask for it to be brought back up next month to determine if those costs should be assessed. So you, you don't want them to determine costs at this point? You just want to reserve that if there is a compliance hearing? So I guess what I'm saying is that with the reserve reservation of costs to be scheduled for next month's agenda to include this case for that point to make a determine of whether or not compliance has been achieved where typically you would not have that compliance hearing. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Why wouldn't or you can't she just call the um, code officer when it's in compliance? Um, it's not, will. it wouldn't have to necessarily come back. We don't have to, unless she there's, unless it's still in violation, we don't, it doesn't necessarily have to come back before us. Right, that's what her point is. If they come into compliance, right. they won't come back before us. So, so the cost will continuously stay reserved. The city will never get there. I just want to make sure that's understood and, and that may be perfectly fine, but it's different from how you previously determined costs in reservation. If she comes into compliance, we will never be able to assess this $158. Are well, we through, comfortable with you're, that? I thought by, that you were reserving costs because at this time you didn't want to charge the, those well, costs. Well, I truthfully was kind of leaning on um, a co-board member and his thoughts, but I think what he wanted to see was her not get charged that fine unless she was not in compliance, in compliance. by the time we came back next month. So if you reserve it and she doesn't come in compliance, then we can impose it, correct? All right. Yes. Okay. So Is that's, right? uh, that that's I think um, the assistant city attorney was just wanting you to be aware that if it doesn't come back for a compliance if, hearing, if we then the city it, doesn't no, have, isn't going to collect its costs. Okay. So just as, so as, as long as you're aware. Reserve, put it on reserve. Mm -hmm. and still go back and collect it if the defendant doesn't come back into compliance by the 8th of May. But the point is that the city has also spent $152.38 in order to get to this point, and they want to be compensated as well. I'm okay with leaving things as they are on this one and keeping that in mind for future cases. Or if everybody's uncomfortable, I'll amend my motion. I think that's a good idea. Make it a reserve. 
to reserve it, especially, didn't you come here last month for the meeting? Didn't you show up? Yes, yeah, she was here last month ready to. Okay, let's leave it the way it is. We have a second, we're good to go. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Member Herman? Yes. Member Edens? Yes. Vice Chairman Beckles? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Chairman Bell? Yes. Motion carried. Mr. Pouncey, you'll be getting a, a, a letter from our attorney stating that fact, and you have to the 8th of May. After the 8th of May, if it's not in compliance and you have not contacted the code enforcement officer, you will be fined $150 per day plus the $152 in cents. Okay? All right. Thank you. Okay, next case, please. The next case on your agenda is number case number 19-10 for the property located at 508 Lucky Street. And the officer assigned to this case is Officer Ken Hutchings. I'd like to invite him to the podium to present this matter. Afternoon, board. Good afternoon. As introduced, I'm Officer Hutchings. I'm here to uh, present to you today case number 1910, being the respondent of uh, Per Trade KFT. The violation address is 508, <clears throat> excuse me, Lucky Street, Florida. And the mail address to any correspondence has also been mailed to that address. What the violations are is the IPMC 108.1.5, dangerous structure and, and um, premise, excuse me. Uh, city ordinances as far as 1223 junk and debris, and we also have overgrowth. And as we see, you'll see the pictures as far as the, uh, the, the condition of the building. Uh, basically, in the narrative of the violations, the initial uh, inspection found the structure on the property had burned out. It is a, a total loss uh, with excessive growth and, the, and growth and accumulation of debris. The initial inspection was on 1120 of 18. The NOV was posted on the property. The notices to respondents were sent out on 1121 of 18 by certified mail. Officer Hutchings, do you have a copy of the notice of the violation and affidavit providing notice to the owner? I do. Could you please submit that into evidence as exhibit number one? Wait, just the first two pages. And to go on, the date given to comply was on and before 1220 of 2018. Um, have not had any contact with the owner. And the follow-up inspections, other than the posting and the secondary posting, the first one was on 2-13-2019. Uh, and as we go through, there were other that corresponded with other postings. Uh, the results of the inspections and each and every follow-up is the, obviously the property remains in its same state. With regards to the IPMC section, 108.1.5, to justify the dangerous and structure on the premise, um, any portion of the building structure that has been damaged by fire. Again, this is a total loss, and it has been, the fire had literally went through and gutted this particular structure. Um, and then we have the commonplace more along the lines of uh, 1326 with debris and grass, and again, 1223 with the debris. Officer, or I'm sorry, Officer Hutchings, based on your several inspections, did you file a complaint? Yes. And do you, did you issue a copy of the complaint and a notice of this hearing to the owner of record by first class certified mail and posting the same at City Hall? Yes. Can you please submit the affidavit of notice of hearing and complaint into evidence as exhibit number two? I don't know how well you folks can see that. Basically, what this is the initial inspection. You can see the exterior shell. Um, just looking at it with regards to the overgrowth and debris. I've got a couple other shots with regards to give a little bit more defined as the condition of the structure. Ooh. That's going to be another overall. Mm -hmm. That's the interior of the structure. Question. Um, Sir. Is the defendant a, an individual or a corporation or a what? Uh, I believe it is an LLC. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's been a little tough just trying to nail down. I'm, I'm not sure exactly along those lines. There's no LLC. The deed that was purchased for this property was through a tax deed sale. Right. And it is not an LLC. And the city has attempted notice through the statutory framework. However, we have not achieved communication with the buyer of this property. One of the reasons <coughs> this case is being brought before you is because it is a new owner from prior violations that were, are, have been assessed against this property. And this new owner has not communicated anything to the city to attempt compliance or attempt to understand the nature of these violations. So there is no response to the certified mail that was sent out? concerning this correct that's correct sir and, and additionally on top of everything that uh, the city attorney just explained is can you speak closer the the llc is actually out of hungary so I'm sorry it, repeat that please i, I didn't understand it. the llc that's listed there actually has a hungary address the country i don't oh, know that it's an llc it's but, not an american well, entity but right. it uh the, we did have dialogue with the original owner they bought it off the tax deed sale, then all of a sudden it changed hands, and then now it's under the new, which is why it got held up from coming to the board earlier. Did you have any sure. prior, uh, any arrangements for the, were there prior code enforcement liens? Yes. When they bought it? Yes. Did you have an arrangement with them as well, to? No, it was when they found out. <clears throat> so this is a international entity that owns this property? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Somebody who bought it in the tax deed sale wrote Budapest, Hungary on the deed as the address where they could be located, but it's not an actual address. It's just a city and country right. as part of this entity that bought it. It's not very much information to go off of. I just have a feeling that we're going to be staring at this for a long period of time. Well, no, actually, this is going to be the initial process due to the fact that after this, this is the preliminary that we're trying to get it to go in for demolition. Okay. We're going to go through, obviously, due process, but the eventuality of what uh, Mr. Tolson and myself were trying to get it to go. To, to when did the tax deed sale take place? Do you have that? It was she, I 2018. I don't have the yeah. exact date. Okay. So it's been a substantial period of time since. It, considering, yes. Considering the blight that it represents and the danger to the neighborhood. That's why the urgency of this and why it's coming in front of you to get this pushed through. The notices were sent to the address on the tax collector property appraiser website, correct? Right? Yes, ma'am. the only one that we had to go by, yep. yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, that's what you have we to could use. not find anything other than country and name. Nothing to send it to. Uh, so we went strictly off property appraisers, tax deed sale, and went from there. Next slide. This is just on the other side, now I'm kind of going in, excuse me, going into the frontage of the property again to show the condition of the structure. This was the initial taken by Paul. I had uh, reached out to our building department and to follow through and put an emphasis on the importance of getting rid of this building and the, and the danger that it does in fact represent to the neighborhood. That's a little closer shot so you can go through and just read exactly what he had found and the date, and again, with, that's my photo, so that again was another follow-up inspection that obviously the condition of the structure or the, or the property had not changed. I have another question, if you don't mind. Sir, I, I, I by all means. I hope we're not digressing here, but if we find this property in violation, which I most likely think we yes, will. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, fines will accumulate until demolition occurs until it goes through the due process and demolition occurs yes right? sir and that's when the fines will stop that's when it changes the condition of the property well, and now that it's met uh, a semblance of compliance the, the monies that were spent in the demo will right. be added to those fines and of course the lien put on the property for the cost of the demo and now how that's in the mixed out in the oh i'm sorry the way, way that it would actually go is, is this board can make that date faster for compliance, mm -hmm. of course. And at that time, once it does, it goes in front of council. Any of those would be attached as a lien, as they normally would. And then the, the cost of the demolition would then be attached back as well. But there's a process that has to go back in front of the city and council. I use this Clause 11, the serious threat of mm -hmm. abating a nuisance mm -hmm. to possibly 
Expe expedite that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's the plan. Expedite. Yes, ma'am. That's the real word there. To answer your question, the city would put out a request for a contractor come and perform the service, which would include cleaning up the junk and debris <clears throat> and the overgrowth and the blighted structure so that the property would achieve compliance by the end of that uh, solicitation being performed. As long as the city gets to get their money back, that's one thing that really matters. That's a trickier matter. Well, well, if the property ever goes up for sale, right? Then we could try to have cost recovery. Right. It, is the city asking for a determination of a serious threat? I think we should. I think that would be appropriate. Would, would the officer I think yes. testify? Yes, um, it would his, also have your, to go in front of the council as well. But no, the, can but we do that at this stage? Would it be your testimony today? Yes, I, yes, would, I would make sure you put your testimony in today that, that this would constitute a serious mm -hmm. threat to the health, safety, welfare of... That was one of the reasons why I reached out to our building department, and the building official, of course, got involved, who was authorized to make that call. And he was nice enough, obviously, with the red placard, which is the highest echelon with regards to damage to a property. And so, but no, if we can go through that as we speak, that would be fantastic. Well, you're, it, as long as we can get in the record that it's, it's your testimony that this does constitute a serious threat to health, safety, and welfare. Most definitely. Then if, if the board so chooses, they can make the determination of a serious threat, and then it goes to city council for the determination of whether they want to take further action. Um, on that serious threat. Yes, and then, yes, um, the the fine would run until the city does abate, and mm -hmm. then the fine would stop running, um, and then there would be an amount owed for the fine, and then there would also be a lien for the demolition, the cost that, yes. of the demolition. Do a, whomever makes this motion, do you have to cite all three violations as the serious threat? I mean, obviously, the structure is the biggest thing, but even mm -hmm. debris is a serious threat in hurricane season, which is, you know, going to be here in no time. In my opinion, those two are minor. Um, you, and obviously well, you can always can just say all of the... I'm going for the fact of, the, of just them. the sheer condition of the structure. An overgrowth is an easy, whether it be... So 6-109 would be the serious threat violation? I would go with that and just everything dealing with the structure. The dangerous structure. And I would premises, put the emphasis yeah. on the structure. The overgrowth and debris is, is, is minute compared to the danger and the blight that this particular property represents to the neighborhood. And after this code enforcement case is concluded, the city will, uh, the city code enforcement department will present a resolution of necessity to city council. And there's a process that the city code requires in order to notify all interested parties in this property that will be going through the request to demo it and then a lien would be imposed. And so that requires several public hearings through our code. So we could make the uh, date to comply tomorrow and move it right along? What's the next slide? That's where you're gonna ask us for what you want. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Grace. So again, this was one of my follow-ups when, um, with regards to the to the posting. Um, on this, based on the testimony and evidence presented in 1910, uh, it is determined that the respondents per trade KFT is, in fact, uh, the owner of record of the property located at 508 Lucky Street, located in Titusville, Florida, as determined by the property appraisers in possession or control of the property and in violation of TCO IPMC section 108.1.5. And that is again, dealing with the structure. Um, the other two, if we're going with the direction of the structure, that was what I would ask that you put your emphasis on. 1326 and 1223 is defined. And also too, it is further recommended the Code Enforcement Board order the respondents to correct the violation on or before 5-8 of 2019. Mm -hmm. And in order to correct the violation, the respondents must generate and acquire permits for either st structure reconstruction, which would include demolition of existing, removal of structure to include its foundation, grade for drainage, and sod within the limits of the entire property. Uh, the order of the respondents be assessed administrative costs in the amount of $81.94. Officer Hutchings, do you have a cost recovery statement to telling the cost incurred in bringing this case before the board? Yes. And what is the amount? Um, as stated, $81.94. Can you please place the cost recovery statement into evidence as exhibit number three? There is no owner present for this hearing. Are there any questions of staff? 
-mm. Yes, uh, one more here. Um, the vi uh, fine that you're asking for, that's per violation, or just, or you just want to concentrate on 6-109? Just, let's just concentrate, if you could, please. Let's, again, let's emphasize and put the concentration with regards to the building. We will no. need a violation. No, violation. Yeah, we want each it'll violation. Uh, it says per, yeah. Viol yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's per violation. Per violation per day. Well, I'm asking them, do they want us to include all three of the violations, or do you want to concentrate on 6-109? Uh, I'm abatement sorry. Abatement nuisance should focus on 6-109, but right. the fines should be all three. Okay. So that, it would be is that what you want? Officer sense. Hutchings, is your request, as it states, a fine of $150 per violation per day to be 450 per day until each of the three violations are abated? Uh, actually, in the... Re in the if the respondent does not comply by 5-8-2019, a fine of $150 per violation per day. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. That could also be waived if it's going to be easier to, or not. <laughs> Let's go with a per violation per, per day. day. No, go with that. Cut across the board and then we'll deal with the violations okay. at a later date once we get the building. Can you go back to the slide that has the actual, all three violations listed there? Certainly. The agenda just has two. It's missing no. overgrowth. Okay. We, see, we got another. We got another agenda from uh, Megan that did show the overgrowth on there. Yeah. Anybody else want to make this motion? <clears throat> Any other questions or anything? I move that the board issue the following findings of facts and conclusions of law in this case, that the respondent is the owner of property located at 508 Lucky Street, Titusville, Florida, that the respondent was given proper notice of code violations found by the code enforcement officer and was given a reasonable period of time to comply before this case was brought before the board. That respondent was given proper notice of this hearing. That respondent or representative did not appear at today's hearing. That the evidence and testimony presented show that respondent did not bring the property into compliance by the date set forth in the notice and the property is in violation of the following code provisions. Section 13-26, overgrowth. Section 12-23, junk and debris. Section 6-109, unsafe structures. Respondents should be given until, should we do tomorrow? Do is tomorrow? anybody against yes. that? April the 9th, 20. Uh, I, I would say, we won't get the orders out that quickly, so um, a week. You, I would get at least seven days. Give at least seven days. All right. So let's call it April fifteenth, twenty nineteen. To bring all violations into compliance, it shall be respondent's responsibility to immediately notify the code enforcement officer when compliance is achieved so the officer can inspect and confirm compliance. If compliance is not achieved by this date, a subsequent compliance hearing will be held and a fine in the amount of $150 per day per violation may be imposed for each and every day. Any of the following, any of the violations continued past the compliance date. In setting the proposed fine, the board considers the gravity of the violations, any actions taken by the respondent to correct the violations, and any previous code violations by this respondent. Today's costs of prosecution are imposed in the amount of 81.94. I further move to find that the violation of 6-109 constitutes a serious threat to the public health, safety, and welfare if the violations are not corrected by the compliance date. In addition to the fines, the board requests that the city be notified and take appropriate abatement action. The cost of any abatement action shall be included in the fine imposed. Second. Second. You got it. Okay. Motion by Ashley, second by Ariel. Any questions? Any concerns? Roll call vote, please. Vice Chairman Beckles? Yes. Member Edens? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Member Herman? Yes. Chairman Bell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. You got it. Thanks. <clears throat> Seven days. Okay. 415, right? Yeah. The next case on the agenda is case number 19-12. 
for the property located at 1024 South Washington Avenue in Titusville, Florida. I have Officer Lewis here to provide testimony and I've also invited Brad Parrish from the Community, um, Community Development Department as this property has a violation that's related to planning. I had an opportunity to meet with the business owner, Mr. Rosario, and with staff prior to today's meeting. And I expect there will be a lot of testimony that's about to be heard regarding this case. And I would like to present a temporary compromise if both of those individuals who I just listed could just listen for a moment. I understand that this property is in violation of not having a business tax receipt. And this case has been going on for some time, the lack of understanding between staff and the business owner. Um, the issue that it comes down to is that the survey requires a site plan for the redevelopment of this location to be in business. And the planning department is in charge of that. Um, um, it's not something that comes through my office in order to determine if the site plan is appropriate. It's not at my level of determination. And so I would like to request that this board continue this case for one month to allow the business owner to produce a site plan and to come to the city with an engineer to have a meeting with staff that I would not be included in in order to get to a resolution of this issue and to avoid the confrontation that may be um, brought up through this testimony. Now, we don't have to do that, but I think that would save both sides a lot of heartburn, and it's um, something that I wanted to suggest before this case gets started and to hear um, some feedback from the board since it's you all who will be making the final determination on this case. I think that you're probably the expert knowing um, what the best for all of us is, and I'd be happy to make that motion. So I have moved. no problems with it. So yes. No, no, sir, no more so moved. You gotta, make a, you gotta make a motion. No more so moved. You've got to make the motion. I move that we continue this case for one month. Thank you. Second. <clears throat> motion by Ashley, second by uh, Ed. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Vice Chairman Beckles? Yes. Member Edens? Yes. Member Monas? Yes. Member Herman? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Chairman Bell? Yes, motion carried. So this case will be continued till next month? Yes, you'll hear this case next month unless it's been removed due to compliance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next case on the agenda is number 19-13 for the property located at 840 Cleveland Street. Thanks. And Officer Lewis is the officer assigned to this case, and I'd like to invite him to the podium to participate in this matter. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, Code Enforcement Board case number 19-13, uh, respondent Elaine M. Thompson, uh, violation address 840 Cleveland Street, Titusville, Florida, mailed to the uh, same address, 840 Cleveland Street, Titusville. Uh, violations in section 13-73 and operative vehicles prohibited, and section 12-23, junk and debris, machinery parts, and scrap lumber prohibited. Uh, a quick narrative, uh, the property has an inoperable vehicle in the driveway with an expired tag. Uh, there's trash and debris and assorted junk around the vehicle and up under the carport. And uh, the property owner has actually, I've given her a couple extensions to get the, the problem resolved. Uh, so far we haven't, and she is here. Okay, the initial inspection, uh, initial inspection was done on uh, October 31st, 2018. Notice of violation posted on the property. Uh, notice to the respondent on November the 2nd, 2018. Certified mail sent an address and returned on 11:15 from the owner. Uh, notice of hearing was posted on 319-19 at City Hall and on the property. Certified mail was sent on March the 8th, 19 and return sign for on 3-6. That can't be. Mm -mm. Three, I think it's supposed to be 3-16. Uh, 
I think it's supposed to be 316 by the owner. Uh, the date given to comply was owner before February the 28th, uh, 2019. Uh, I have spoken with the owner. I have never met the owner. I have spoken with him over the phone and, uh, and left some messages. Uh, Follow-up inspections were done on 12-20-2018, 2-28-2019, and March, the 19, March 19th of 2019. Uh, the results of the inspections, there's been no visible change to the property. Okay, city code defined 13-73, uh, <coughs> inoperable vehicles. You can't have one for more than 72 hours on your property, whether you own it, rent it, lease it. Okay, um, section 12-23, machinery parts, scrap lumber, et cetera, storage and maintenance, maintenance, maintaining prohibited, lawful for any person to cause permit junk, scrap metal, scrap lumber, Waste paper products, discarded building materials, or any un un unused, abandoned vehicle, vehicle, vehicles, abandoned parts, machinery, machinery parts, or other waste materials to be upon your yard, garden, lawn, outbuilding, or the premises in the city unless connection with it, unless it's connected with a business that is specifically allowed to be there. Okay, there you can see. Uh, this picture here is, uh, you can actually see the posting hanging up on the pole there, the pole to the left. And you can see the debris up under the carport, the trash in the car. Same picture from just from a distance where you can see the, the accumulation of trash and debris at the rear of the car. There's another one, that's, that's the day that the actual hearing was posted. And you see the junk and debris. Before you go, and I'd like to enter some evidence. Yes. The first one is, uh, do you have the proof of, did you, after your complaint, or, I'm sorry, after your initial inspection, did you provide notice of the violation to owner of record by first class and certified mail as well as posting the same on the property and at City Hall? Yes. Do you have the proof of mailing and affidavit as to notice? Yes. Please submit the proof of mailing and affidavit into, as to notice into evidence as exhibit number one. <coughs> And after your inspections, did you file a complaint? Yes, I did. And, based, and did you issue a copy of the complaint and the notice of this hearing to the owner of record by first class certified mail posting the same on the property and at City Hall? Yes, I did. And do you have an affidavit as to this notice? I do. Please place the proof of notice and affidavit into evidence as exhibit number two. And we'll jump right into this one. Do you have a cost recovery statement detailing the cost incurred in bringing this case before the board? Yes, I do. And what is the amount? $150.88. Thank you. Please submit the cost recovery statement into evidence as exhibit number three. <coughs> okay. okay uh, based on this testimony, the recommendation is uh, in the uh, Tysville Code Enforcement Board case 19-13 determined that the respondent Elaine M. Thompson is the owner of record of property located at 840 Cleveland Street, located in Tidesville, determined by the property appraiser's records, in possession or control of property, and in violation of Tidesville Code of Ordinances, section 13-73 and section 12-23 as defined. It's further recommended <coughs> that the board order the respondent to correct the violation of owner before May the 8th of 2019. In order to correct the violation, the respondent must remove the inoperative vehicle, all trash, junk, and debris from the property. Order the respondent be assessed administrative costs in the amount of $150.88. If the respondent does not comply with the order on before May 8, 2019, a fine of $150 per day should be imposed for each day the violation continues. Sir? Yes. We noticed on the what was that, the violation the section? Violation. That you mentioned something about a stagnant pool, but it's not here. That, that is, uh, that part has been taken care of. There were some other violations on the property also, but they were taken care of before it came. Uh, okay, we're just wondering. Yeah. There's overgrowth too. 
the other the other, the other violation was fence, so but that's been taken care of. Well, I don't recall that being listed on that page either. And that's all I got from here. There is an owner present who would like to, I'm sure, make a presentation to this board. Please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name and address. Elaine M. Thompson. You need to speak right to Shirley. <laughs> Elaine M. Thompson. Uh, yeah, the house is a wreck on the outside. Um, long story short, I have, and I do have uh, professional uh, documentation to this effect, I have a physical and mental disability that it often leaves me incapable of doing much of anything. I have attempted to clear the debris away. I have gotten as... Uh, Mr. Lewis has said the, the other parts taken care of. Uh, to be perfectly honest, my condition lost me three jobs last year that I enjoyed very much, so I was not thrilled with that. Um, I have just now, as of the 25th, been in a condition where I was able to start a new job, which I'm hoping to hang on to. Uh, so I was in a situation where I couldn't do the work myself and I had no money to hire anybody to do the work myself. So what I'm asking for is, is there any way possible? Uh, I know you've given me a month. Can you give me two under the circumstances? If nothing else, that will give me time to, since I've just gone back to work after being off for almost a year, accumulate the funds to have somebody do it for me. Ma'am, in looking at some of the photos, and some of that's like just trash that needs to be picked up, and I don't think it needs like professional services. Is it really like fair for your neighbors to have to look at that every day, like clothes baskets and I don't know what some of that other junk was? Like it's just a matter of kind of throwing it away. Um, does it take two months to pick up a bunch of clothes baskets and stuff? I will be perfectly honest. There are days when I have to fight myself to get up and get something to eat. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Madam Chairman, are we allowed to ask a personal question? Mm -hmm. Depends on the personal question, I think. How personal? Ma'am, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but do you live alone? Yes, I do. Have you reached out to anyone, like Boy Scouts or anything to help you with that? I had not thought about the Boy Scouts. They're always looking for service projects. Teenagers, Thank you. Teenagers at schools are looking for um, community service projects. You'd be a good one. I had not. I didn't even think about the Boy Scouts, and I was not aware of the other. <laughs> Thank you. If you reach out to someone like that, it means you're going to have to make the phone calls. We, we don't do that. I understand. You make the phone calls. Call Mr. Lewis and tell him what you're going to get done as soon as possible. Thank you. Because you've already had two. He already he gave you two yeah. uh, extensions. extensions. And, you know, you you got a neighborhood to think about. you yeah. got junk to think about and what it breeds in there. So tell us what you can do, and then we'll have to think about the extension. Thank you. And as, far, that. and as far as the inoperative vehicle is concerned, I'm sure if you want to get rid of it, I'm sure you can uh, donate it to some uh, school somewhere. They'd be glad to take it. Actually, what I'm, what I'm in the process of doing now, I am doing something. I'm looking for the title so I can sell it to a, uh, a junker. Or write it off your taxes. One of the two. If you donate Pretty it to, to a high school with an auto department, they might, they might do that. That's right. I had actually had thought about that, but it has a recall on it. <clears throat> I'm a little nervous about giving it over to a high school with a recall. Is there one car or two cars in the driveway? Uh, one car is my operable car. Okay. 
So it's and I, which I would like to get underneath the carport. Okay. Right. Well, you've got some things to do, so it's up to you. And it's up to you to stay in touch with Mr. Lewis to let him know what's going on. I will. Can I have your card because I lost your number? I don't have one on me. I'll write it I down. I have your number. I will call you. Thank you. Um, what do you want to do? I can't do it. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to do? Gina, what do you want to do? You can give her one month extension and bring her back next month, or have Mr. Lewis testify next month of what's going on. Well, Everyone's looking at me to make a decision. I guess give her a chance if you want to give her an opportunity to I, try to clean like, it up, but, um, I'd li I'd like but some of that's... Go ahead. I'd like to give a chance, but she's already had two. Seven months. Um, we can go ahead with the process. We need to acknowledge the violation, yes. She can reach out. Uh, we've got to... All we would do be doing is t making our order to correct 30 n days farther than what it already is. Um, <coughs> I guess if it came into compliance before then, we would never see it again. And, and it's all, all of this is the trash that's outside in the car. That all can be taken care of. In and I guess we could say this. What we ought to do today, because we're seven months into this process or more, is we ought to say by the 10th or the 8th of May, this should be satisfied. And we ask you, we might be inclined to set your date another month out but we ask you to do your absolute best to get it done by May 8th, because that's what our job is, is to make sure that you're in compliance in a timely fashion. And if any of us make a motion and give you an extra month, we're doing it hesitantly because we're not getting what we need out of it, which is compliance. So if we made a motion and we gave you two months to comply, we would ask you as nicely as we're doing with you to please, 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 try to get this accomplished by the 8th of May. That would be what they asked us to do, the city asked us to do. And the only reason why we're hesitant is because uh, you had uh, previous extensions. And that's why we're sitting here mumbling to ourselves a little, you know. I understand, I would be too. But you just threw me a lifeline when you said about the scouts, because I had not even mm -hmm. contemplated them. Which means, you've got to find, which means you're gonna have to find a scout troop and talk to them. Or talk to the I'm scout I'm pretty good at research. I'll find scout, somebody. Scoutmaster. Okay. That's up to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You will be getting a letter from our, from our uh, attorney we stating all this. Yet, no. I know. So, but they're going to make a motion. Our June board meeting is the 10th of June. You want two months? So the Friday before is the 7th of June. Okay. June or May? May. What do you mean, May? Well, we well we're getting our, our a, a following. Given, if we, they're asking for the fifth, for the eighth of May, which is what we want. But we will give her a. a she's asking for two extension. months. She's so asking for two months. I'm not going to give her two months. But she, actually, she's got two months: April, May, June. So. Make no, the motion. I'm, I'm I'm lost here on this one. Okay, she she asked for a two month extension. No can do. She's already had two months so, extension. So uh, okay. Right now, the city is asking for it to be May 8th, which is next month. Okay. We're going to extend her one extra month just to make sure she can get in compliance. So that makes it to June. So she does get two months. That's what I was thinking as well. Yes, but we're not that's, continuing that's it for two months. It. We're just setting the order to correct two months out. If she's not in compliance in two months, she comes in here and there's a daily fine attached to this. Within, when we find non-compliance. It may not be spelled out in, in black and white as a continuation of two months, but it's two months continuance. Okay, all right, listen. The city asked for May 8th. That's what we're asking. Were you asking for an extension from now for, to, for two months till June, or are you asking for from the May 8th to July? No, just till June. Uh, from now, two months. Yeah. That gives me time to find the Boy Scouts make the motion. and get Just this make the motion and then we'll have to vote on it. So just make the motion. 
I move that the, the board issue the following findings of fact and conclusions of law in this case. That the respondent is the owner of property located at 840 Cleveland Street, Titusville, Florida. That the respondent was given proper notice of code violations found by the code enforcement officer and was given a reasonable period of time to comply before this case was brought before the board. That respondent was given proper notice of this hearing. That respondent did appear at today's hearing. The evidence and testimony presented that the respondent did not bring into prop bring the property into compliance by the date set forth in the notice and the property is in violation by the following code provisions. 13-73, inoperable vehicles and 12-23, junk and debris. Respondents shall be given until June the 7th, 2019 to bring all violations into compliance. It shall be respondents' responsibility to immediately notify the code enforcement officer when compliance is achieved so the officer can inspect and confirm compliance. If compliance is not achieved by this date, a subsequent compliance hearing will be held and a fine of the amount of $150 per violation per day may be imposed for each and every day any of the violations continued past the compliance date. In setting the proposed fine, the board considers the gravity of the violations, any actions taken by the respondent to correct the violations, and any previous code violations by this respondent. The city's costs of prosecution are imposed in the amount of $150.88. Is there a second? I'm no sorry, second. but I, uh, no, I... Nope, no second, so redo the motion. Well, I think somebody else has to redo the motion in the way they want it. <laughs> okay. I, I, you uh, don't have it, to repeat the whole thing. You can say the can same motion, it. but with the a same, different... Well, can I just say the same motion? No. But, um, <laughs> Be nice to me. <laughs> Come on. This let's, is my let's, first let's go, day let's back. Go. <laughs> um, can I just say the same motion, but until May the 13th? Okay, wait a minute. Oh. Now, what are you saying? Second. So y'all want to give it to May 8th? Or uh, May, May? The, the, next, the next schedule meet. What's the next schedule meeting? Is it 13th? Or? It's May 13th. No. Next. Yeah, you're right. It is May 13th. Okay, the next scheduled meeting at May the 13th. In other words, instead of the two months that she wants, we'll give her one month. She's already had two months, I'm sorry. I agree with Just you. Just to pick up some garbage, I mean, that could be done in 24 hours. You really need you to get your microphone. <laughs> I might not have wanted that. All right, so what date, what date are you asking her to be compliant in? For May the 13th. By, by the hearing date, right? By, by the time of the next hearing, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Second. Thank you. Y'all driving crazy here. Let's see. Okay. Motion by Ed, second by Gina. Any questions? I have a question. Tell me again exactly what you want. They want May 8th. Okay. That, that could be imposed. Right. That could be, I'm sorry? That could be imposed. A fine of $150 a day. Per violation. Could be imposed on you at the next scheduled meeting. So I would strongly recommend to reach out and have the trash picked up and the vehicle taken care of. Was the motion completed? Did, yes. did you mention the motion uh, was cost complete. recovery? I did. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Any other questions? Roll call vote, please. Member Herman. Yes. Member Edens. No. Vice Chairman Beckles. Yes. Member Grant. Yes. Member Monis. Yes. Chairman Bell. Yes. Motion carried. So you have to May 13th be in touch with Mr. Lewis, find you some uh, volunteers. volunteers out there and see what you can get done. But stay in touch with Mr. Lewis or otherwise number now. it will be $150 per violation per day. And it adds up fast. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You will be getting a letter to that effect. Okay.
Board Attorney's report. I have no report. Oh, okay, good. City Attorney's report. Also no report. Code Enforcement Manager's report. No report other than thank you all on the uh, 508 Lucky case that'll allow us to get moving and take care of an issue. But thank you all for how, that. How, how long do you think that'll take before it moves out through the uh, city, uh, city well, council? Well, that's quite a process that I'll have to work with the Assistant City Attorney on. Go, wait, I hope to have it in front of council. Do you all block it off or anything because it's going to be oh, we, we will. Okay. But I uh, hope to have it first or second meeting of May. Okay. Thanks. Now, does the... Uh, no, uh, on the same subject, when you start the, the uh, demolition, that's the fine stop then, or they it doesn't stop not, until not, not until the the job is complete. It's which not. means when they throw the last bit of hay over the sod, that's just, when it stops. Just trying to learn. Yep. Yes, sir. I might be mayor one day. Oh, well, there you are, sir. <laughs> no. A chairman's report. Um, the only thing is that we're not going to do any more uh, motions. Um, as stated, it's going to be a full motion from now on. And we when was that about policy what, changed? Well, when Ms. Nutter came in. Okay. I'll talk to her after. What do you mean by as stated? You mean as stated by code staff or? No, it's when they say uh, so moved. Oh, oh we need oh. the motion on the floor or right. on the, so people might instead of saying as so moved and whatever. Was that written in our policies and procedures manual? I think if I know. You want to write it? I think that would go back to Robert's rules of order, just having a good motion so that the person who's taking minutes can appropriately write what minute it, or what motion was made. But it makes it a lot better. It's a little and it makes it a lot after, better after for the people 15 who are watching or 18 years. All of a yeah, I know, but say, it makes it a lot easier it. for people that are but watching. I mean, it, we want to be we want to be prim and proper here. <laughs> anything else? I don't have anything else. Our board members report. Anybody got a, y'all got a report? Board members report. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.